Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at dividing radicals. If you want to know how to multiply, add, or subtract radicals, check out my other videos. Uh, I put a few together here that are, they're all a little bit different, um, and we may add one more to the second uh, in a second, just so you can see how this can play out in a couple of ways. Uh, but the, fir the number, first one here is probably the easiest form of division. When you have a radical divided by a radical, you can see we want to make sure that the index numbers, the indices are the same. And they, they look pretty good here. They're both three cube roots. And also, if you were to guess, probably you'd guess that the two goes into the four, like normal numbers. These are glued together by times. And that the three would go into the six. And actually, if that was your guess, you'd be correct. So this one here plays out by simply dividing four by two, which is two, just like you would do with regular numbers. It's really in the radical parts that we have to be careful. Since the indices are the same, then we can combine the six and the three like a normal division. So the three goes into the six two times, and then you can simplify that by saying two cube root two. Um, so probably the easiest way, the coefficients divide, and then the numbers under the radicals are actually called radicands, they divide as well. Only if the index numbers are exactly the same. Do you see they're both cube roots? Okay, so this one doesn't look like a divide necessarily, although remember every time you have a fraction it is a divide. A fraction is something over something, so it's a divide. And the two doesn't go into the five, and you can also see that it doesn't appear as though there's any ra radical upstairs, although there always is, it's radical one. Um, the issue here is that you have a denominator that's irrational. So the square root of any non-perfect square is actually irrational. And in math, we don't like that, okay? So just like you have to take two over four and write it as one over two, this is another form of simplifying. So what we want to do is sort of play with the idea of multiplying by 1. So if I multiply by 1, I know that it doesn't really change anything. And I'm going to use a little magic trick here. You'll see why in a second. If I was to multiply by root 3 over root 3, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1. And so it won't change the value of the blue number. It'll just make it look different. So the benefit to doing this, notice I chose three here, is because this is a three. And I know that the square root times the square root, sorry, the square root of three times the square root of three is the square root of nine, and the square root of nine is three. So that actually allows the radical to go away. So in the numerator, what I have here is, there's a coefficient of one there, five times one is five. And then the square root of one times the square root of three is the square root of three. In the denominator, this is where the magic works. The two has to stay, it's sitting there. And then the root three times the root three is actually just three, okay? And then simplify the denominator, so that's gonna give me a five square root three all over two times three, which is six. Caution, caution. See the three here and the three there? They can't be divided. So don't divide this three into that because this three is sort of outside the radical and this three is inside the radical. Another case is where you're gonna rationalize the denominator, but you can see here that the index is three. So cube roots come in triples. Square roots come in pairs. So root three times root three released the square root of three as three, do you see? So I only had to multiply once, but if I wanna release the six here, because I can't keep a radical in the denominator, what I have to do is multiply that two times, okay? So if I was to multiply by root, th uh, sorry, cube root six, and then another cube root six, what you're gonna see is the cube root of six times the cube root of six times the cube root of six is six. So you need three of them because the index is three. Also here, cube root six, cube root six, and then you just bring everything together that can be brought together carefully. Notice this is square root, so I can't combine the square root with the cube root. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the four, that's already there. I'm gonna write the square root 11, because I can't do anything with that, but I can combine these because they have the same indices, three. So I can multiply the sixes together. So that's gonna to be cube root of 36. This looks really weird, I know. 
And now the y is already there in the denominator. I'm going to write that as y. And so the cube root of 6 times the cube root of 6 times the cube root of 6 is actually just 6. OK? And you can work that out too. I mean, if you multiply 6 times 6 times 6, you're going to find that that number, if you put it into the calculator and you cube, root it, cube rooted it, you would actually get 6. These are all being glued together by times. So you can do some cancellations. So the 4 and the 6 can cancel. The 4 and that 6 can cancel because they're both outside numbers. 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 6 three times. And so you can write that as a final answer. 2 square root 11 cube root 36 all divided by 3y. And that would be an answer. All right, we're going to do one more example like example 2, except we're going to change the denominator a little bit. All right, last but not least, so here we have another sort of division type problem where you have a denominator that has a radical in it, but you'll notice it's combined with another term. So that's called a binomial denominator, and I can't just multiply by root 6 over root 6. If there was just a root 6 there, you could multiply by root 6 over root 6, but in this case, I can't do it. It won't work. You can try it, but I guarantee it won't work. So what we do is we, we sort of use the denominator, but we switch the middle sign. And this is actually called the conjugate. Conjugate. The conjugate's pretty easy. You take the numbers that are already there, so the 4 and the root 6, but you change the middle sign. So when we conjugate it, we actually change the middle sign. And of course, I still want to just multiply by 1. So what I write downstairs, I have to write upstairs. All right, so reminding myself that I'm not changing the number. The number, the blue number is still going to be exactly where it was on the number line. It's just going to make it look different, and I'm going to be able to get rid of the radicals in the denominator, which is what I want to do. I'm going to put brackets around these binomials. Binomial and brackets both start with the letter B, <laughs> so make sure that they work together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it out. Now, I'm not going to do much with this upstairs because you can expand it, but you may find that it doesn't really make any difference. So I'm just going to leave it like this, okay? But I'm going to do some work on the denominator because that's what I really have to pay attention to. I can't have radicals. So I'm going to FOIL it out. So first, outside, inside, last. So FOIL means first, multiply the first numbers together. 4 times 4 is 16. This is really just like polynomials. 4 times root 6 is positive 4 root 6. And then negative, negative root 6 times 4 is negative 4 root 6. And then last, negative root 6 times positive root 6 is negative 6. OK? So the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6. What you notice is that these two terms cancel. That's why we use the conjugate. The conjugate will produce that effect. So then I can write the next step as just keep the numerator as it is. So 5 root 3 bracket 4 plus root 6. And now the denominator breaks down pretty well. So the 16 will work with the negative 6. So I'm going to get 10. So 16 minus 6 is 10. And then check to see if there's any more opportunity for cancellation. And there is. The 5 and the 10, they're both non-radical numbers. Um, so I can, I can actually cancel those. Okay. So the 5 and the 10 each have a 5 inside. So 5 into 5 is 1. 5 into 10 is 2. Um, no, notice I'm not going to be dividing into the 4, okay? So there's only one term in the numerator. So that's going to be equal to root 3, bracket, 4 plus root 6, all divided by 2. Now, I'll ca caution you. If you went as far as to expand the root 3 through, and a lot of kids will do that, you can do that, but your teacher may hold you to some simplifying. So root 3 times 4 is 4 root 3. And root 3 times root 6 is root 18. Now, I can't divide the 2 into the 4 because the 2 in the denominator has to go into both of the terms upstairs. Also, the root 18 
Don't forget, root 18 is 9 times 2. And then you can see here that the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 2 is just square root 2. So I'm going to write that below as 4 root 3 plus 3 root 2 over 2. Now that doesn't lead to any more further cancellation, but if you do expand this out and you get a root 18, your teacher may want you to, to write it like this. So there's the final answer here. I'll put a box around it. And part of this is getting used to how the answers look. It's a really ugly answer. It almost looks like roadkill, but just know that those numbers are numbers. They live on the number line, they're real numbers, and they're irrational numbers too, because you have square roots in them. All right, I hope that helped. And if you enjoy the video or you find it helpful, slap a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe and share with anybody who you think could benefit.